So let's be real, when you're in the joint environment, you learn a lot of army tools. And I have loved the AI tool Camo GPT, but in typical Air Force style, Nipper GPT has made some amazing updates. Let's jump in. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Liz Moyer, and I refuse to start my day without opening up a large language model at work. I did a review of Camo GPT, which you can check out here, but I got some great feedback on updates to Nipper GPT, which I wanna go over. Bottom line is, have both of these large language models downloaded on your government computer, and depending on what you need to do, switch between the two of them. So jumping into Nipper GPT, this is the framework, and what you can see is that it is approved for IL-4, and it does go up to CUI. If I look at Camo GPT, you can see this is IL-5 CUI. Uh, they're both unclassified, but IL-5 can handle a little bit more information when it comes to different plans and things related to security and nukes. When you go into Nipper GPT, it is very counterintuitive where you upload documents. In my previous video, I talked about how you can do that. They made the updates, but it's not intuitive. So what you'll do is you're going to go to Workspaces. In Workspaces, you can see here, I created a test. You'll click on Test, and this is where you can upload the documents. Go to Upload, and then same thing, you have to make sure you have verified this information is not classified. Over here, you can see the different types of tools that you can upload with. Also, if you hear the screaming in the background, I live right next to a playground. But here you go, you would click to upload and it will go in, look for the information. Let's say I want to do building trust as a leader, I would press open. It would go from there and then I'm going to move it over. Once again, it has some extra clicks. I have to actually press the button and then transfer that one file to Nipper GPT. I will then close out and you can see that in this workspace, I have two documents now. Unfortunately, in order to reference the information, you have to go back to Nipper GPT. Way easier in Camo GPT, you go to the plus button. Here you go, open the file, make sure that you have verified the classification, press upload. If you do get an error, sometimes you just need to go back and make sure that you've put in all the information. Sometimes if you don't, put even a description, it'll kick it back. So one of the big differences between Nipper GPT and Camo GPT is the models that they're using. So if I go back to bottom left hand corner, you can see the large language model I can choose from. So Nipper GPT offers Gemini 1.5, but you can also see it has 2.0 Flash, Anthropic, Meta Llama, um, and two different versions of Meta Llama. One thing I want to point out is the parameters. For example, you have Meta Llama here, which is 70 billion, and 3.1 is 405 billion. So think about this in terms of the size of the large language model. Nipper GPT has multiple models with multiple sizes, but they are much, much bigger than Camo GPT. For Camo GPT to know what model it is, you can just ask it. Okay, so I asked it the question and it told me that it's built on Llama 3 and it has the 8 billion parameter version. So if you remember back to Nipper GPT, it had a, um, some of those models that were larger. So all that means is that it is not looking as quite as much information. You can see it notes, hey, I'm small, but I am very efficient. And what is really cool about Camo GPT is that all of the army regulations are uploaded into that. So there's a lot of information they can pull from. So regardless of whether you're using Nipper GPT or Camo GPT, it is extremely important to think about temperature. What I mean by temperature, you can see the sampling temperature here. You want to look to see what its default is, and this is 0.7. So if you've ever heard of the concept of hallucinations where it will just make up a quote that you can't find, it's because you have your parameter very high up. So I was talking with some experts when I discussed it with them, they recommended putting this at 0.1. And so that means it's going to be very, very decisive and it's gonna look for um, the correct answer. It's not going to sit there and think you need a guess. So make sure that when you go in and you're using either one of these to drop that parameter down. If you totally forget what I'm talking about, you can click on the little information and it will tell you what you're looking for. So if you're like, what was the sampling temperature again? Click over the eye, it tells you the information. Frequency penalty, you can adjust this how you want to, but big picture, if you were looking to avoid those repetitive responses, so if you're asking a question and it keeps on trying to give you the same answer, up this and make it a little bit higher. Because 
the lower the frequency penalty, then it'll just say, I'm going to give you the same answer unless you make a better prompt. And then retrieval chunks. This is really cool too. I would up this all the way as high as you can is that when it's looking at a document, it's going to figure out how much it's going to separate it out. So the higher the value, the more information it will retrieve. Jumping back over to Camo GPT, where you find the parameters, top right hand corner, same thing, drop that temperature down, go to, I would say 0.1. This is also very interesting and this is the context length. So you can see here, if I go over the eye, it says this is the maximum number of tokens from the conversation history to consider for the next response, almost like a memory. So I found this, jump this all the way up as high as you can. Very, very important because let's say I give it an acronym and I say, I want you to write me a DMSM. I think I actually have an example of this. The first time it said, oh, I think you want me to write a daily military situation map. So I corrected it and said, nope, I'm looking for a defense meritorious service medal. But the issue was that the further I went in the conversation, the character count dropped. And so as I was teaching it, it jumped back to, oh, you want the daily military situation map instead of the award I was looking for. The amazing news and the reason why I had often been using Camo GPT versus Nipper GPT is that Nipper GPT is Nipper. But in 2025, Sipper GPT will be coming out. So very excited about that. I do want to point out there's some really great resources on Nipper GPT. The RAG guide is very helpful. And if you hear the word RAG, that is the retrieval augmented generation. And the whole concept is that we're giving that large language model more data because remember it was only trained on a certain amount of data. I really like this because it went over concepts like hallucination, temporal limitation, source reliability. And once again, we're not AI experts, maybe you are, but I really like these tools. So here's some really good guidance when you would want to use RAG and when you don't need to. And then on the left-hand side, you can see the available models, the prompt engineering, some really good techniques with that. I really like this. It talks about the, I've done a different video that talks about the prompt canvas. This is very similar, talking about the task, context, format, action, examples, constraints, tone and role, and then some of the best practices. And then role-based training, y'all jump into this, very cool, especially just depending on, you know, what hat are you wearing when you're trying to use it. I do love though in Camo GPT, I can go back and I can look at all the different files that I've uploaded. This is really cool. And I love being able to create workspaces where if you're working on something and you've done a ton of work, you've trained that model, it's creating a great decoration or it's creating a great email and you want to share with that with someone, you can go in and you can create a, a workspace or you can join someone else's workspace. This is amazing. One other thing under user settings is you can give it a little bit more context. It says, what would you like Camo GPT to know about you to provide better responses? So I could say, hey, I am a human resources professional. Last thing, if you click the question mark, Camo GPT does have some really good resources as well. The release notes, and there's a Camo GPT Teams that is Army specific, um, but you can request to do that. I won't go over ACBOT. Um, it is up to IL-5, but maybe I'll do a different video on that. So right now I still find myself using Camo GPT more, but it's just because I'm on the classified side pretty frequently. However, I have them both pulled up all the time. And with the new models for the Nipper GPT, it's been really cool to see and train it. I am hopeful that the Air Force Research Lab will continue to make Nipper GPT a little bit more user-friendly, but regardless, these are tools that can save you time. If you're not sure where to start when it comes to prompting and submitting documents, my best recommendation is to just start and grab someone else, explore with it, and see how it works for you. Please put in the comments how you are using both of these large language models to make your day suck a little less. Thanks so much. I hope you like, subscribe, and share with others.